we started using thulium laser as um, a method to to resect bladder tumors and block. The main um, idea came from the uh, characteristics of the thulium laser. So it's uh, it provides a very precise uh, uh, pinpoint um, energy that will help um, resecting the mucosa of the tumor with good hemostatic powers. And also, um, it, it reduces the morbidity and risk of uh, bladder perforation due to its precise forward movement uh, of dissection rather than the old um, uh, electricity bipolar or monopolar uh, resection. We initially have multiple preparation steps. So um, what we what we do, uh, obviously, we, we look at uh, the CT scan and the appearance of the tumor uh, during cystoscopy when we are doing our initial assessment of the blood the tumor. Uh, we, it, we generally um, use this for papillary tumors, um, uh, but uh, recently with, with increasing knowledge uh, and practice, we are now are also able to do sessile tumors with a broad base. Um, but the most limiting factor really is the size of the tumor. So uh, we always want to make sure that the tumor is not very large. Usually it should be under three centimeters. Um, um, and also, um, you know, the the, uh, the location of the tumor within the bladder um, is important. Having said that, with our improving learning curve, we now feel we could treat any location within the bladder. Um, now, the, the thulium laser, um, as I said earlier on, it, it has a very safe profile in terms of coagulation. And it's um, also penetration within the tissue of the bladder um, is limited. So it, it penetrates about uh, 0.3 to 0.5 centimeters. So therefore, um, it's very um, safe in use. And with that, it reduces the risk of bleeding and the risk of perforation, which is the two most important elements in any cancer treatment. What we do, we initially start by marking the base of the tumor with the thulium laser, and then we um, start going through the layers of the bladder until we get to the muscle layer, and we use the irrigation and the beak of the scope, which is the tip of it, to lift the tumor up, um, and we will go underneath it, and then we will divert towards the edges, in our, what we call a um, smiley face or a U-shape uh, dissection until we get to the size of the tumor and then we remove it all in one uh, piece on block. This is very important in any cancer treatment to minimize the risk of seeding and the risk of fragmentation. The standard approach we always uh, used is using diathermy. Uh, and that this is uh, utilizes uh, electricity to create energy through using a hot loop. And that's either with um, uh, monopolar or bipolar electricity systems. The use of energy has got its drawbacks. So therefore, as I said, the, the penetration depth is higher with energy. The conduction element of the electricity sometimes creates what we call obturator jack. And this is a, a sudden movement of the um, pelvis uh, and the legs due to uh, stimulating the obturator nerve, which passes just underneath the uh, sides of the bladder, which is actually, have you know, interestingly, is the most common site for bladder tumors. And therefore, with this sudden jerky movement, um, multiple bladder perforations uh, um, happened in the past. So we found that the laser actually reduces this risk by um, large margins. Um, we, do, we do not think this is suitable for large tumors, and that's not because we are unable to resect it with the laser. The difficulty is that we don't have an extraction device to remove the tumor at the end. So it defeats the purpose of removing this on block. So we could use the laser to resect bigger tumors, four, five, six centimeters, uh, but the difficulty will be in removing them out. Uh, certain positions within the bladder might be tricky, and also muscle invasive uh, bladder cancers uh, are not suitable to be removed by the um, laser. Having said that, as I say, as our learning curve are improving, uh, we're finding ourselves that we could um, use the laser for what we call early T2 uh, bladder cancers, which, where the tumor is just 
um, uh, infiltrated the first layer of the muscle, which we call T2A. Um, and we have one or two cases that we managed to successfully resect them completely on block uh, using the thulium laser. The use of laser allows us to perform the procedure um, with general anesthetic or with spinal anesthesia. So we're not limited to general anesthesia um, because of obviously the risk of the operator jack. So that is quite useful, especially in patients who have uh, respiratory uh, issues where they could not have general anesthesia. Um, it shortens the procedure time and therefore it shortens the anesthesia time which is uh, documented uh, and um, that it increases the morbidity of the procedure. So the shorter the operation is, the, the more benefit to the patient. Um, it's very useful in patients who are on anticoagulation because the risk of bleeding is very limited. And to be honest, our um, early experience now we have performed this on about 50 patients. The uh, post-operative recovery and the rapid return to normal activities are much quicker with the laser compared to the diathermy. So there are multiple aspects that this uh, does um, help us. We use the Rockamed uh, thulium laser, but for that uh, principle, you can use any thulium laser providing machine. Um, I use the setting of two joules and 10 Hertz. So we use 20 Watts uh, energy. And uh, we use a 550 micron uh, thulium laser fiber uh, to do the procedure. Um, we use a resector scope that provides a continuous uh, irrigation uh, for better visibility. And um, we use a stabilizing laser access sheath to make sure that the la laser fiber uh, remains in vision all the time. The thulium laser, it's a very good hemostatic powered laser. And is very uh, and lasers in general uh, are very precise in the nature of resection. So, um, these two advantages helps us reduce the risk of perforation. It reduces the risk of bleeding. Uh, you are It's a very controlled forward movement. So the risk of deep resection also is limited and therefore that will enable us to give most of those patients a, um, a post-operative uh, chemotherapy, which obviously uh, reduces their risk of recurrence. Um, with patients on anticoagulation, we generally um, restart their anticoagulation in a shorter period of time compared to the old technique with the diathermy, uh, which way we used to keep them off the anticoagulation for two weeks to reduce the risk of post-operative bleeding. Uh, with using the laser, we're now uh, restarting the, their medication within 48 hours. Um, the risk of catheterization is lower, obviously, and most patients that we have performed the procedure on have left the hospital without a catheter as a day case procedure, so on the same day. Um, we also, uh, our initial experience showed that those patients are less likely to suffer from what we call irritative symptoms. So they do not get the usual frequency and urgency to pass urine after operation. And therefore this reduces their uh, either hospital return visits or uh, their visits to the general practice, which used to be quite high in patients with uh, bladder cancer who just had an operation. So um, I think our initial experience is quite good. Uh, we're obviously in the um, uh, prospect of collecting all these data. Um, and we have also been invited to participate in an international study now, which will validate the use of, of laser in bladder cancer. Yeah, so that, that is, this is a very good question. Um, the, all the studies that, I mean, as I said, the laser itself, it's uh, used in blood is very new. So we do not really have long-term data for oncological outcomes, such as risk of recurrence, risk of progression, um, et cetera. Um, however, the technique of on block um, has been described in some studies to have a, a better uh, recurrence rates uh, than the conventional TRBT, it reduces the risk of seeding, uh, but there is no randomized uh, controlled uh, studies that has shown there is an added benefit for either laser use or on block resection yet. But what we what we find um, currently, there are two main advantages for using the laser. One is it provides better specimen analysis for uh, the pathologist. It reduces the need for return to theater either for resection or for control of bleeding, and also reduces the risk of bladder perforation 
and improves our ability to administer post-operative mitomycin chemotherapy. Uh, so uh, these are these are the main advantages.